Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It's September 12, 2024. Great to be with all of you today. My name is Bob Lang, and it's time for our Daily Bites. We're running a little bit late today because I had to take a look at some of the data this morning that came out on the PPI, which uh, um, I would say, by and large, it kind of came in um, mixed, mostly as expected. We did see, um, let's take a look at the numbers here. Um, we did have a... Uh, a bit of a slight pop in the core monthly uh, number from 0.2 to 0.3 on expectations. Of course, uh, the prior month was a negative. Um, this is a volatile number, so you know we should expect the, the numbers to jump around every month. Uh, but the trend continues to be down. The core PPI year over year 2.4 um, and 2.3 was the prior one, so it was expected to tick up a tiny bit. It did that. Um, jobless claims came in at 230, expected at 227. So that continues to portray that the uh, job market is slowing down very, very, uh, at a very gradual pace. Uh, Corp PP, again, Corp PPI, the headline number on the PPI came in at 0.2 versus 0.10 last time around. These numbers are not enough to, to take the Fed off of a, a planned rate cut next week. However, uh, these numbers, along with the jobs data came out, probably argues the fact that they will only go 25 basis points next month. And it also argues for more of a, a staggered approach. What they may do is they may cut in September, pass in November, cut in December, that sort of thing. So we may have that uh, uh, plan coming in. I've been uh, saying all along that the Fed won't be done cutting interest rates until 2026, maybe March, April of 2026 at the earliest, all right? It's going to be a very slow process here. Now, according to the Fed Funds futures, we saw two-year yields drop below 3.6% yesterday, uh, lo lowest yields they've, they've been at in for quite some time. And that is um, meant to put some pressure on the Fed to step up those rate cuts um, I don't believe that the Fed will be listening to the markets. They're, listening, they're paying attention to the data. The market is seeing something different than what the Fed is seeing in the data, I believe. And we will hear that next week. And if the Fed dials it back and says, look, you know what? Fed fund futures, you're way, way ahead of us. That could be some uh, create some volatility in the markets. We can see the markets move down quite a bit. So anyway, listen, um, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the markets yesterday. It was a it was a watershed day yesterday. It was it, it was extremely impressive. With the S and P 500 futures were down at one point about 90 handles. We finished up close to 55, 56 handles. It, it was a, it was an amazing turnaround, 150 handle move, and you can see the power of this move on this candle over here. We opened up uh, slightly higher and then fell sharply after that CPI number came out. Um, Found a low, which was uh, right around the low from um, last Friday. Bounced off of there, which is about, it was about 54.09. We filled that gap down there and uh, managed to make our way back in a big way. Uh, you know, you, some would call it short covering. That's fine. Short covering starts um, big bullish rallies, right? Um, especially when the, when, the, when, when the heaviness of the short sellers uh, weighs on and we have days like yesterday happen, which frankly, I'm telling you right now, it is quite rare to see a drop of say one and a half, almost 2% in the markets to rally back to close more than 1% higher. Very, very rare situation. So what that sets up for is today, if there's a follow through day, what is a follow through day? We get a higher high and a higher low today uh, in, in the markets. And that will set us up for a run, very, very quick run, I believe, to the all-time highs on the uh, on the S P 500, and that comes in at around um, 56.70, roughly 56.70 right now. So we're only um, 120 points, uh, 115 points uh, lower than that right now. That's just about two percent. So that could that could happen in a, in, a, in a big way. Again, when the markets move as they did yesterday, about two and a half percent from uh, from the bottom to the top. Um, it, it's a violent move. It's a huge violent move. And it, it tells us 
that the big institutions are stepping in here. All right. Got to listen to that. You got to pay attention to that. The big institutions are stepping in here. This is really good support at 5,400 yesterday and from Friday. But the big, big money is coming in and, and buying stocks here, right? They don't have to wait until earnings season gets started next month to start buying stocks. In fact, what we what we what we find historically is the best price action is is outside the lines of of earnings season, right? The best price action we get sometimes is in March, sometimes is in late uh, late uh, February, in June, sometimes in late May. This year it was in uh, the later part of August and into September. So something to look forward to i know a lot of people have been talking about myself included september historically being one of the worst months uh of the year in fact it's the worst calendar month uh of the 12 months in in in, in, a, in a year however i did also say that on the back of a strong august we've often had a strong september to follow up with so that's something to, to consider now of course that first week of september was was just uh, God awful. It was uh, down four or five, six percent on some of these indices. Now these markets are starting to um, regather um, some of their strength and pick up some of those losses from last week. So um, we'll have to see um, how that goes. Of course, that last week um, was we 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 finished August um, at about fifty six fifty. So we're about a hundred handles away from there. So if we can recover back to those levels. That would be a very impressive move. And uh, again, um, money continues to flow um, into the markets. We've seen good money flow. Uh, let me put that up here on the, uh, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, um, two things. We're going to see on balance volume, and we're going to see shake in money flow here on the S&P 500. So you go down over here. We see good, strong money flow, even as the market dipped in the first week of September still stayed rather, rather positive and we see on balance volume with which drop money flows dropped over here. look at that really strong move in money flow this week on on balance volume okay these the combination of these two right over here extremely important to show you and tell you that big institutions are coming in um and buying um, buying up this market so um a couple of names that i have on my uh, radar screen they do have earnings coming out actually roku is one that we we added in the portfolio. Um, it was a beautiful. Um, I, I put this chart out um, in the in the chat room uh, last uh, yesterday, and uh, frankly, it was extremely uh, extremely strong. Uh, let's see what I do here. Uh, go down over here. Yeah. So so what do we have here? We have a. Um, I'm going to draw this in for you. Um, we have a, a a nice pennant pattern over here, right? We had a breakout yesterday to the 200 moving average. Today it's going to close. It's going to open above there. Um, but you know we have this nice strong um, base here. And once we broke through um, that uh, 64.65 level, tested it on lower turnover, good volume day yesterday. It seemed like somebody really knew that there was going to be something happen. I guess it was an upgrade this morning. Stocks up almost six percent. Um, on some good volume already this morning. This is one you're going to take a look at. Um, we have it in the service. I think it's going to make a run um, right back up here. Of course, um, there's some resistance of uh, the gap over here at 77. There's another one at 92. But, you know, look, we got plenty of room left for this to run. So um, earnings don't come out until October. So we're, we're, you know, take a look at Roku here. This is one that I think is going to make a, another sharp move. Again, we added that one um, in the... Um, it added some of that recently, and then we added more um, in the service yesterday. Let me show you where I put that in here. Um, yesterday, uh, da, 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 da. Well, I don't have it on here yesterday from yesterday, um, but we did add it um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, another name that I'm looking at is which I did add uh, uh, earlier in the week, and you can see that over here is added a few more adobe october 600 calls at 20. i have other strikes as well too they have earnings coming out later on today so it'll be an important uh, important report we, we saw the stock mo really move nicely the other day after oracle reported a really strong number on uh monday night 
um, stock, this stock had a really good um, reversal pattern and closed near the highs of the session. Um, I think with a good earnings report, the stock is going to make a run towards um, towards 600 and then beyond. We've got some gaps to fill as well from back up over here. And uh, um, I think that, uh, um, again, if the market takes their earnings report positively, the stock is going to make a make a good, strong, maybe five to seven percent move tomorrow. Um, other than that, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, oh, Broadcom, this is one that um, I was pounding the table on yesterday had a great day yesterday um on really strong volume let's take a look at that um it bounced off that 200 day moving average on uh when on monday and shot up here shot up here and if it gets another strong day up here um because it'll be a follow-through day and we could see um the stock making a run over to those uh, old highs eventually so um we do have some resistance of course um, down over here at 170 and then of course at 174 but stocks at 158 that's a good 10 percent move um options are uh are, are expensive but um, they always are for broadcom right so it's a hundred dollar stock um let's see what else here um oh yeah so i wanted to take a look at the oscillators um so the um nymot which is the Nymon. Let's take a look at that. Um, so uh, the New York, uh, the New York Stock Exchange oscillator is still negative territory, um, but did bounce off of a moderately, mildly oversold reading on uh, Tuesday, um, bouncing up here. And once it gets back up to that zero level, we can make a little run here. The only problem here is that you know it's it's got a um, it's already got a pattern of lower highs. On here so we probably need to get above that trend line here um, and once we bounce back up there it could be um, several days to get back to that positive line unless we have a really strong move say like today or tomorrow um, so uh, that's gonna be it um, you know be paying attention to the markets uh, today have some protection on yesterday it was a great day to have protection yes I know the markets rally but still you know if you didn't have any puts on while the markets were going down, you know, um, down the tubes in the in the first, you know, three hours of the day, you you felt kind of lost here, and you might have sold stuff before you uh, really needed to. Having the puts on, having the protection on, helps you a get into new names, new call names, and b helps you hold on to those names if you need to and wait for uh, for a potential reversal like we had yesterday. Not always going to happen like that. Right. That's not the point. The point is, is that you've got to have the protection on and then wait for um, better, uh, better action, better price action to develop. So um, I think it's going to be it, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. I will be back on Monday, uh, September 16th to, uh, to do the Daily Bites with you again. Uh, please send my uh, uh, Daily Bites out on Twitter, on other um, social media as well, too. I appreciate that. And uh uh, good luck with uh, with your trading today and tomorrow. If you're in the chat room, I will see you there. If you're not in the chat room, well, you should be. Come on over, explosiveoptions.net. Sign up and come on into the chat room. Get some big trade winners as well, too. And welcome to some of those uh, viewers who've been watching us on Stock uh, Twits. Great to have um, all of you joining us as well. And um, don't forget, oh, next Thursday, big webinar, Basics of Options Trading, September 19th, next Thursday. We'll be, we'll be sending some invites out. Uh, on social media and into the chat room and into your email box if you're um, subscribing to the daily emails. Uh, that's a big one. So if you are new to options trading or just, you know, have a light um, uh, knowledge of what's going on with options trading, this would be a good review for you uh, to learn about some of the uh, techniques that I use, some of the basics about getting started with uh, with trading options. So um, I appreciate everyone, again, spending a little bit of time with me. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys all on Monday. Take care.